video we are going to look at creating some form of life system for our um, little player and what we are essentially going to do is every time we get hit by one of these enemies we are going to lose a life and we're going to try and print the lives on the top as well now in preparation for this i've already made a sprite and this sprite is called s heart um, one thing I have done with this sprite is I've made this slightly smaller. So this is 32 pixels, whereas standard um, sprites that I've used in this project have been 64 pixels, right? So the reason I've made it a little bit smaller is because of the location where I want to place it. So I'm going to be placing these hearts on the top here, okay? So I want them just to be sort of in the top there. I don't want them to be too big, um, but I want them to be big enough to see. Right, so the first thing that we need to do after we've drawn the heart is make a heart object. So I'm going to right click on the player because it's to do with the player. Go to create and then we're going to go down to object and I'm going to call this O heart. We're going to bind the sprite to the object like so and that is that for now. Okay, so we're going to close this later now the reason i have these hearts is so that we can pick up health okay now before we go and do that there's one or two other bits and bobs that we're going to need to sort out first within my player i have a create event and we have a score which is set to zero now what that means is every time the player loads the score is reset to zero and if I did something like this, ooh, let me just get rid of that for a second. If I did something like this, add in a variable here and said lives is equal to three, then every time this player loads, my lives would always be equal to three. Now that's quite important because what we can do is when we go from one room to another, if you want the lives to reset, you wouldn't, you would actually use something like this right so it's lives of three if you want the lives to just be progressive in other words you don't gain anything when you start a new room you'd actually take this out okay and we need to put it in somewhere else okay so the first thing that we are going to do is add in some setting to give us three lives throughout the game now in order to do this we actually put the lives in our game manager so if you recall a few lessons ago, I made a object called game manager L1. And this object doesn't have a sprite. If I double click on it, all we use this for is to display the score. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to add an event, a create event. And we're going to say when this object is created, we're going to set lives to three. Now lives is a built in variable. Henceforth, why I don't need to say global.lives because um, it's available everywhere in the game. If I were to say player lives, then I'd need to make it so that it's accessible throughout. But I'm using a built in variable for now, it'll be easier at this moment in time. So lives is currently set to three. And as long as this game manager starts in this room, which it does, that will be absolutely fine. Now, what we need to do is we need to display those lives. And what we will use that is the draw GUI event, which is here. And currently we only have our score in there. So I'm gonna add something else in here now at the moment, let me just reset that. And we are going to use something called a draw stacked sprites. Now, this is basically saying, right, what, uh, what sprite do you wanna draw? Well, we wanna draw our heart, how many do you want to draw? Well, instead of saying I want to draw a number, because if I said draw a number, it'll draw the exact number that I want. What we're going to do is we're going to reference the variable. So we are going to draw the variable lives. Now we just created lives here and we've set it to three. So what will happen is it's basically saying that's going to be three. Now in the position where you want it, the X and the Y, um, what we can do is we can move this over towards the other side of the screen. So you need to work out now what that position is going to be. Now, as a rough rule of thumb, if you hover over somewhere with the mouse, in the bottom corner here, there's 
a set of coordinates. And what those coordinates do is it tells you roughly where your mouse is at. So as an example there, my mouse there, look, if we say 1200 by 14, we'll see what that does for us, okay? So 1200, probably I'll go with 10 for now. I can move this up later, but we'll see what this actually does. So if I just play this at the moment, we'll see now what this or how this would actually work. Okay, so that's not a bad guess there. Obviously, 10 is probably a little bit too uh, low. So let's just move this and we'll put it down to 5. Okay, probably we can do with moving it up a little bit as well. So let's go up a little bit more. Let's go just put 2 down. Let's see then what that does. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. We can even go up another one if we wanted to nudge it up one more pixel. So that's fine. Okay, so straight away, we can see we have our hearts there all stacked up, ready, set to go. Lovely. Okay, now there is one downside with this, and the downside is these are very close together. Now, the reason they're very close together is because if I look at my sprite here, there's absolutely no room next to it so there's a number of things we can do with that if i go to edit image right and then under the image menu at the top this might be hidden on my screen recording now but there is a, a menu which says image and um, what we can do is we can resize the frames and by doing that we can resize the canvas so we can make the canvas a little bit wider. So let's say, for example, the width, we instead of 32, we want it to be 36, as an example. If I click Apply, what that does is it'll add a little bit of space, look, onto the side here. Now, if we close that and then just play the game again, what you can see now is there's a little bit of space in between these okay so that's one way of doing it now when we get hit by these french fry type things what i want to do is i want to lose a life so how do we do that well it's quite easy if we open up our player ooh, sorry the player object i should have said and we go to this collision so the player collides the enemy french fry. If you remember, we did a jump to start, so it jumps to our start point. And then if the score, if we've actually collected anything, we lose a point. Well, what we would also do is we do a lives, negative one. So let's say, for example, lives. And then if we say minus one relative, what that does is it'll take one off our life. So let's just see what we're doing here now. Okay, so if I move and I'm going to deliberately get hit by this object here. So straight away, look, you'll notice I've lost a heart. And if we get hit again, you'll notice we've returned and we've lost a heart. And we're on the last one. Bang, we're out. But what happens if I keep on getting hit? Now then, what's happening is... It's basically, it is still working. It is still taking one of my lives. However, the issue I've got at the moment is I've got nothing to tell it what to do when our lives hit zero. So in order to do that, we need to run a check. Now we could run the check here. So we could say if the lives is equal to zero, then restart game. Um, or we can do another type of check in what's called a step event. Either or, it doesn't really matter. Now, I'm just gonna do this within a step event. And the reason I'm doing this in a step event is later on, we are gonna use another type of enemy which is gonna lose lives or take lives off us. So if I put this code only in this enemy, it would only work for that enemy. So by using something like a step event, it'll work for any enemy that we add in. So what we need to look at is an if statement. If I just minimize that for a second. So I need to say if my lives is, I want to say less than or equal to zero, then 
we need to do something. Now, there's a few different options here. So if we've lost all our lives, really what we want to do is we want to restart the game. So if I look for restart, you can see you've got restart the game, restart the room, let's restart the game. So this restarts the full game. So it doesn't matter if you're on the last level, if we lose all our lives, we restart the game. So let's see what this does now. So if we go and we get hit, okay, so that's the first one, I've lost one life. And on purpose, I'm going to lose another life. And what you might have just noticed now is I've now got all my lives back and my score is back to zero. And at the bottom here, you might have seen something coming up here in the text output. The reason being, we've actually just restarted the game. So at the moment, we've got one life left. So if I go and grab something there, and we're going to go down here this time, if I get hit down here, they all come back, the game's restarted because our lives went down to zero, okay? So that's how we build a life system within here. Now, in order to make sure that you have these coming up on everything, you would need to have this game manager or something similar to this game manager in your second room. Now, it's very tempting to drag this in and indeed I have on this one because I duplicated the room. So what you might need to do, if this is something you have done, is with this game manager, take it out of living in level one, right? Just by clicking, dragging and dropping it and then change its name. So if this game manager is gonna be constant throughout all of it, just right click, rename and just call it game manager. That way, you will know that this game manager will belong in every single room. And what you'll also notice, if I just play this really quickly, is that when we go from one room to another, what you'll notice is things like your score system should stay. And hopefully, if we've done this correctly, the lives will also stay as well. So, with the lives, because we've put it in the game manager, just reset at three. What that does is when the game loads, you will automatically have a reset, which will reset it to three lives. Okay. So in the next task, what we're going to do is we're going to make a third level and we're going to use one or two more enemies and we're going to probably look at creating a few more collectibles as well and we're going to look at a different score system or a mechanism to get score a different score system working